Like so. How are you guys doing? Y'all nervous, huh? That's okay. If I asked you guys if you had good reasons to believe that God exists, would you all feel confident that you could say yes? No pressure. We're all here to learn. Do you feel that it's more, I grew up with it, my parents, my country, my culture, or more, I have good reasons for it, I've thought about it, I've analyzed it, I've researched it, I've discussed it, which do you think is more accurate? I believe God exists. It's the first and primary belief of a Muslim. So if you're saying you're a Muslim, you're saying I, I'm certain that God exists. And more. Islam is more than that, but that's like the first and primary belief. Do you believe it's more, it's, I grew up with it, it's my parents, my culture, I absorbed it, I accepted it, or more, I thought about it, I researched it, I discussed it, I debated it, and I believe in it. What do you guys think? You can. You don't have to. I mean, it's up to you guys. Yeah, it's what I grew up with. So okay. It's what I know sure. to be true of my culture and my sure. people. Do you think that's good enough? Are you uh, satisfied with that? Or do you like the idea of, like, it should be something that we learn, discuss, research, explore, until we get to the point of, like, conviction and certainty that it doesn't matter if everyone else said no, I'm certain about it. What do you What do you think? I think we should definitely be researching it. Sure. A lot of us uh, take what our parents say and adopt those beliefs without questioning them. Fair enough. And that leaves a lot of room to have culture and what's religion. Fair enough. And culture, culture is very different from religion. Fair enough. I agree completely. Have you guys ever heard of any arguments or an exploration of this topic of God's existence? Any of you taking any classes or heard any lectures that was like, there are good reasons to believe that God exists, or it's God, there's no contradiction between God and science, or there's no contradiction between religion and faith. You can raise your hands, you're not in the video. Have or have not? Have? Ever heard any of these topics? No? You have? I've seen some you know? videos. Some videos? You have? You study yes. religion? Yes. Very cool. So check this out. Science tells us that the best evidence we have, the best model for the beginning of the universe, is the Big Bang. That's the beginning of science, it's the beginning of time, space, energy. Right? That the universe hasn't been here forever, that it has a starting point. We're calling it the Big Bang. Right? There's nothing, and then there's everything. And it's expanded, right? It's the beginning of time, space, energy, so therefore it's the beginning of science. So the question of, does a God exist or not? Is there something bigger than the universe? Do we have a creator, etc.? Those questions are outside of the world of science. I'll say it again. If the universe began to exist, which is what the best evidence we have according to science, science is saying that the universe began, and the Quran's narrative on the beginning of the universe is very much in line, it seems to be very much in line, but I'm not a scientist. But the, the scientists are telling us, pretty much they've unanimously agreed that the universe began to exist, hasn't been here forever, has a starting point, and that's therefore the beginning of science, because science is our study of that universe. If that's the beginning of science, then the question of was there anything before that, is there a God, is there a creator, etc., would be outside of science. What do you think? Does that make sense? Outside of science. So if it's outside of science, you can't use a telescope or a microscope. It's not something you can touch, feel, hear, etc. It's not the scientific method. It's not empiricism, right? What can we use to explore the question? What can we use to potentially answer the question? The question is, is there a God? Does God exist? Well, we can't use science because God, by definition, created the universe. The universe began. So before that, it's the beginning of science. Science is descoped. Hopefully that's, that makes sense. It's not, we're not saying it's unscientific, but we're saying it's not a question for science. Science is what's inside the universe. So what can we use? How would we even approach the question? I'm trying to make this a bit interactive, but I can definitely go into lecture mode, but I like it when you guys think about the question, and even if you don't get it, don't feel bad. We're all learning. I took a number of classes on this topic before I felt confident enough to share it. So hopefully, inshallah, this will inspire you to look into these things if, if you're interested. But what do you guys think? If it's not a question for science, what can it be a question for? How can we possibly answer the question of God does or doesn't exist if we can't use telescope, microscope, etc.? Any thoughts? It's a tough question. It's okay. Just thinking about it is good. Good. What do you think? Okay. So the, what you're asking because you think that's the right answer. I want to know what you think though. Don't feel. Don't. Don't worry about it. I think it's like the only logical answer if we're not uh, okay. counting science. You answer the question. You're saying let's use logic. Yes. That was the answer. Or that was the answer looking for. And it's. I'm trying to think if there's any other potential answer. And I think in this case. Obviously, I don't have all the answers, but in this case, that, is, that would be the one. So we can't, if we can't use our eyes, ears, touch, feel, etc., we can use our intellect. So use logic, correct. The other one you said, you said you use the word of God. 
but then it becomes kind of cyclical. There's a book that says God exists. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not incorrect because the Quran can get us to think and to understand and to reflect and we'll leave that for another episode. How about that? We'll get there, inshallah. If we do turn this into a series, no pressure. If it does become a series, what I'd like to do is talk about God's existence and God's oneness. That's Tawheed, that's Islamic view, and see how it's logical and scientific and so on. And then talk about how we know the Quran is from Allah, how we know the Prophet Muhammad was telling the truth that he's actually a messenger, and go from there. Because everything in our faith, all of our beliefs and our actions and the celebrations that we have, and even the culture and the lifestyle and everything that comes from the faith, comes back to these three things. God, the Quran, and the Messenger. Makes sense, right? So the question of the scripture, we're going to leave it out. We're going to go back and say that the universe began to exist. That's what we know scientifically. Can we build up our faith, our beliefs? Can we build it up off of that foundation of science and logic and so on, which is the language of our times? That's kind of the premise behind the class. But you were right, 100%. You said logic. What do you guys think? Logical arguments for God's existence. Is it logical to believe in God? I don't want to pick on any of you. I know you guys are a bit nervous. It's a new, new university, new campus, new people that I'm still getting to know in a new city. So I've done this for a bit, but I won't, I won't put you guys on the spot. Usually I do like to pick on people. I'm trying not to. I'll be like, but yeah, none of you guys are on camera. So I can breathe. What do you guys think? Is it logical to believe that God exists? And if you say no, I'm not going to like shame you. Like, oh, but you're Muslim, you don't. You're, you're you know, assuming that you're coming here and you are saying publicly that you're Muslim. If not, that's up to you, of course. But if you are saying it, you believe in God. You can still say, I don't think it's logical, but I believe it. Right? Faith versus law. That's another discussion. So I'm not trying to put you into a box to try to... But do you think that it's logical as in like, can someone, outside of your experiences and what you've been taught and what you believe and how you feel, outside of all of that, or I should say in addition, because I feel it as well, and it's personal experiences, in addition to that, do you think it's something that can be seen logically? It can be argued. Someone who says, I only believe in logic, science. Can you still put forth the case for God's existence is my question. You're nodding. You think the answer that you believe is yes? Yeah, I think you can. What do you, what do you guys think? I'm not sure. You're just saying, I'm not sure. I'm here to, here to listen, which is, I love us, you're already for that. Sophia, what do you think? Um, no pressure. Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Okay, no worries. Not, nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I've taken a number of classes on this topic before I felt this confident to talk about it. Not easy stuff, but inshallah, you'll, you'll see that it's powerful. So the answer is yes. You can put forth a number of different logical arguments for God's existence. And at the end of the day, a person accepts it, rejects it. It's up to them, right? Because we're a lot more than just, we're not robots. It's not just logical proofs. That's not how we're wired as humans. But if someone comes to you with that's their language, you can relate to them on that level. All right, Islam is for everybody. It's the religion, one of my favorite articles. You can Google it if you're interested. It's called Islam, colon, the religion of natural bridges. You're talking to a Buddhist, you're talking to a Hindu, you're talking to someone an atheist. I'm someone Christian, there's something for everyone without having to mold or shape the religion, something it isn't. It already is there for everybody. So if someone's whole thing is about Jesus and Mary, we have lots to say about that. It's beautiful. If someone's into spirituality, into meditation, if they're Buddhist or Hindu, etc. We have, we have our prayers and we have our shura and we have our spirituality, which is not my strength. I'm not really good at that. But if you are into uh, discussions and dialogues and debates and which college campuses are excellent for, I know some of you are not comfortable with that, some of you are, but the world, the language of uh, science and logic absolutely works. So here, here's how it goes. The universe began to exist. It's the beginning of science, right? So we're using our intellect. The universe hasn't been here forever as a starting point. Logically, there are four options. What do you guys think they are? There's four options. The universe has a starting point. There was nothing before. Well, the universe wasn't there before that, and it starts to exist. There's four possibilities. What do you guys think they are? The universe came from... What do you think are the options? Logically, there's a number of different options. I know some of you are already thinking, well, it's Allah created the universe. Yes, we believe that. But if we're trying to break it down logically, there are four options. And if you have a fifth, that'd be cool. You can add to this class, but everywhere I've ever been, no one's come up with anything outside these four categories. What do you guys think? The universe, if we know that scientifically the universe began, hasn't been here forever, what are the options of where it came from, how it started? What do you guys think? Question makes sense? Yeah. One option is that the universe exists within another universe already. Universe exists within another universe. Yes. So that, that does go back into the idea of there is a, there is a, there is a starting point somewhere, there is a beginning. Mm -hmm. But the, okay. our universe right now exists within another universe that already exists. That existed before, so the Big Bang, there was something before that, it was another universe. Yes. Cool. We're going to put that as option, option three. Okay. Something created the universe. He's saying another universe that this is within. Others can say another universe came before. We're going to put that, in, these are categories, four categories. There's a million answers, but four categories. So something created the universe. Okay. What other options are there besides something created the universe? Anything else? Or that's only a possibility? But they have all the, they, I've been to a number of high schools, a number of universities around the country. I've done this in videos on many platforms. First person to ever answer that one. So 
get points for that. No one's ever said that. Universe within me. No one ever said it in that way. Yeah. That's not multiverse. That's different, right? No, it's First not multiverse. Hear that. The multiverse is the idea that right now we have all the universes like at the same time. My answer is more we the, either uh, all universes created and there's already another universe and we're inside that universe. Got it. Or the previous universe was destroyed at some point and we our universe was like created from that destruction of that Got previous it. universe. So rather than parallel, it's more like chronological, but it's like we don't know all the details, but yes. love it. We're putting as option three, guys. There's at least two other options. Think, think, think. What do you guys think? Can you think of other options? That's the best one that I Okay. Have. Okay, but you're saying that's, your, that's, the one, that's the one you like, but like, can you think of, any, we're thinking about, we're trying to put categories of all the possible answers to this question of, is there something before the universe? All the possible answers, not what you believe is true. All the possible answers, then we're going to go through them. Maybe I didn't clarify. All the possible answers to, is there something before the universe? Is there a God? What created the universe? Those questions, what are all the possible answers? Not the ones you agree with or think are logical, but what are all the possibilities? We'll go through them. Yeah, what else? No, What's a possible? Be very close, nothing. nothing. That's number one. Nothing. We're going to go into that. Nothing created the universe. It's had its beginning, there's nothing. And number three, we loosely said something, because there's a lot of different ways of putting it, but something. There's, there's one other option. There are three, actually. Four is because three has part A, part B. We'll get into that. But three, nothing, something. What else? Some of you are like, it's a Monday, Abdullah, you're making us think. We got classes, we got exams, we got midterms, we got finals, we got applications, we got internships, resumes. What are you doing, Abdullah? Never getting invited again. I love this stuff. And um, inshallah, it will, hopefully it will be a benefit. But third option, guys, something, uh, nothing, something. Can you think of a third option? Try to say it? Everything? No, that's something. Put that as something. That was good. Something. Try to say it? Itself. It's so nothing, itself, something. What do you guys think? Makes sense? Can I use this? It's a nice big whiteboard. This room is perfect for this class, yeah? Thank you guys so much for booking it. Those are the hardest stuff. Me coming here and speaking in front of the camera, that's easy. You guys booking it and making the flyer and all that and sharing it and it's all the best, mashallah. I'm so pro MSA, so it's not even funny. <laughs> With all the you know room for uh, improvement and all the mistakes and mistakes make and all the drama and all that, I still am very much pro MSA, so I love them. Hope to work with them for the rest of my life, inshallah, if I'm able to. Be of value. But yeah. So it's so a starting point. No. Explosion, right? It's the Big Bang, basically. Big Bang. Okay. The universe. Getting bigger and bigger. We're here, right? So we're going back in time. We're here. Today, it's like a timeline. We're going back in time, and we're not going to the reason how scientists know that the Big Bang is the best model. We're leaving that because it's not a class on science, about philosophy and theology. But among the evidence is the fact that they see, can see today the universe is expanding. So then you go back, if you see it expanding, you go back in time, it's smaller, right? If you see something getting bigger, you're like, oh, I wonder what was going on before that wall. So it goes back to a point, okay? I'm not an artist, not even close, but one. Maybe I can go one this way, or I can zoom this one out a little bit. Boom, don't worry, you guys are still not in it. Not the clearest marker, but it's okay. Nothing, which put N, keep it simple, to itself. Three, something. Okay. There's two options. That's why it becomes four. There's part A, part B. Something could be, I mean, there's a million possibilities, but we put them into two categories. Every something could have been also itself, also created, like the universe. We agreed. Science thing it has a starting point, so we're saying created. It's not something uncreated, it's something created, right? Like us, created. Marker, created. Universe, created. According to science, right? So that every something could be also something created, like the universe, which means what? For that something, we can also say, what created it? It was created by nothing, created something. To get it, it goes to infinity, we'll get to that. Or it's something uncreated, which what Muslims call Allah, God, something uncreated, okay? We'll get there, so there's actually four options. We'll go through the nothing. What do you guys think? The universe was created from nothing. Possible, impossible. I know Muslims are already thinking, no way, it's Allah, but remember here, we're in a world that is far more secular, agnostic, atheist, liberal, whatever, you know, labels have their pros and cons, and uh, we should be beyond labels, and uh, they definitely don't you know, do people justice. It's not fair to put people in a box. We don't like when we, put, we are put in a box, so it's not the goal. But whatever label we want to use, agnostic, atheist, secular, et cetera, uh, that, is, uh, that is a predominant worldview in the world today. That's a fact, not my opinion. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying that is the dominant global ideology. It's the fastest growing religion, too, if you call it a religion, which they don't call it a religion. Islamically, it's seen as a religion. Regardless of that debate, that's the fastest growing religion in the world. And the number two would be Islam, and then uh, evangelical Christianity, and then Hinduism, I think something like that. But yeah, 
So in a world where people speak the language of science and logic, or at least that's the language they understand and relate to and like, and they're not sure whether God does or doesn't exist, that's agnosticism. Atheism is saying we're certain it doesn't exist. I'm going to assume agnosticism is more popular, although I need to do more research. And to me, I would say it makes more sense. But regardless, in that world, we're trying to be a bridge and trying to relate using that language. But I know some of you are already thinking, Abdullah, why don't it it's not create the universe? Fine. Let's take it step by step. Nothing created the universe. What do you guys think? Possible, impossible. Emotions aside, but logically, possible, impossible. Impossible, but why? The why is sometimes more important than the what or the how. Why? I think no matter how small it was, it must have been something that expanded or for the okay. to have come okay. to fruition. So okay. it, could not, it could not have come from absolute nothingness. I'm going to start picking on you guys because we're going to know each other for the last 15 minutes. I'm sure I know you guys, some of you guys from before, but. Again, the camera doesn't show you. I don't think people recognize your voice. You obviously don't have to answer. Only, only being silly, but what do you think if I, if you allow me to pick on you? Do you think it's, do you think there's a, do you think it's logical or illogical that the universe came from nothing? And then why, which is the harder part, but also like, it's the important part. Too much on a Monday afternoon, huh? Illogical. Illogical or logical? Illogical. Illogical. The universe came from, from nothing. nothing. Can you explain? It's okay if you, in your own, in your own words, your own language, because it's that's good enough. In your words, your language, how would you try to explain why? You said it's illogical, which is true, and I agree. But how? Take your time. I feel like why? there'd have to be something to start something else. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What do you think? Um, would it be okay if I play the devil's advocate? Yeah. Let's go. Thank okay. you. Well, let's, let's make this fun. Yeah, absolutely, yes, you can. Didn't you say that Allah hasn't been created by anyone? Yeah, we're defining we're defining Allah's uncreated creator. And we'll okay, to that, I yeah. know. So, if you I know where she's going with this. believe that Allah can be uncreated, could it not be possible the universe can uncreated. be uncreated? Great question. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, yes, oh, yes and no. Well, no. The answer is no. Why? Because science is telling us the universe began to exist as a starting point. It is created. It can't be created and uncreated. And it's not uncreated. It would have been here forever. It's, it was created. It has a starting point. That's what we're asking. So nothing itself. So you're saying, yeah. We came from nothing? Is that what you're saying? So we'll get to Allah. We'll get to uncreated creator and how what that means. And you can like you can like this part. We'll get there. But right now, the universe, since since remember we started off, the premise was science is telling us, and we're basically assumed, I didn't go into in every detail and every point I made, but it's assumed that we're agreeing that if scientists together unite on something, we should agree to it. Unless we have other evidence, like we're accepting science to a certain extent in this argument. Now, I do also believe that you can come to the conclusion about Islam without using any science, but that's another point. But in this discussion on college campuses, our class about rational foundations of Islam, it's about science and logic. And if science is something the universe began to exist, therefore, like, can you add it? Okay, how about this? I'll say, I'll put it in this way. Can you add another category? The universe began to exist, therefore, it came from nothing or itself or something created. Or, can you add anything else, or do you agree it has to be one of these? Um, probably one of those. Well, yeah. Do you think it come from nothing? Do the universe come from nothing? I know you're saying, well, how about God? We'll get there. We'll get there, because the universe and God are different. God has, this has a starting point. If we define the uncreated creator has no starting point, so it's different. But you're asking a great question. But do you think the universe could come from nothing? Mm, probably not. Yeah. It started, it came from. Nothing has ever come from nothing. We've never had any evidence that anything has ever come from nothing. Something comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. And nothing has never come from something. So we'd be assuming it, there'd be a belief. We'd create a whole, if we really want to believe the universe came from nothing, or the marker, or me, or anything that was created, because us and the marker and the universe seem very different, but they're the same in this, according to this logic of created versus uncreated. It's created, it has a starting point. I had a starting point, the marker had a starting point, the universe had a starting point, according to science. And the Quran, but right now we're saying according to science. If it had a starting point, we've never had ever, we never ever had any evidence that something came from nothing. No philosopher, no scientist, no Muslim, Christian, Jew, theolo theologian basically, or Hindu, but no one's ever had any, put forth any argument or any proof that anything has ever come from nothing. So we'd, what we do is if someone wanted to accept nothing, they'd have to bring evidence. I've never seen it so far in my life. Or they basically have to believe it. But believing in something without evidence is scientific or unscientific? Scientific. Logical or illogical? Illogical. Before I go to the next point, some of you maybe are not fully satisfied. We can spend more time here, or you think that was, you have a response? Yeah, I can move on. Huh? You can move on. Okay, so, so we're not saying it's not nothing. 
I'll be best marker. That's okay. Next time you gotta bring a better one because in the video I don't think it shows, but it's alright. Two and I don't think we have a marker here. I really have to go home. Okay, so the universe didn't come from nothing. Okay, itself, universe created itself. So it's not like there's no need for another universe or universe inside of it or multiverse or a, or a, or a god or a law or someone. Some people are saying, well, you don't need to go into all that. It's simpler. It makes more sense. Just it created itself. What do you guys think? Universe created itself. Universe created itself. Possible, impossible, why? Are you guys having fun or just me? Because I love this stuff. Next time we gotta have pizza, we gotta have food. Make it even more fun, man. Go ahead. I think it's possible, but it's possible. It's possible, huh? It's possible that it created itself. Hmm. It's not, I'm not saying that it came from nothing. It's more of the components were there for it to expand and become what it is now. The components were there. Can you repeat it? Sorry, repeat it. Yes. The components were there, mm -hmm. and those components before the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang, okay. and those components expanded and created what we now call as the universe. Okay, but that means that's not the start. Of the, okay, so well, what, okay, fine. Okay, those components were they created or uncreated? So what created them? You see, it goes to that, yes, that's so, another issue. So no worries, but, but but that is our but that is not another issue actually right now. That is our issue. Our issue is if something came before the universe, what what created that? If there's something that components that created that or an energy, Stephen Hawking, you guys know Stephen Hawking? Yes. Passed away a number of years ago, he was in a, he was in a wheelchair. He's, he's famous for being one of the top you know, atheists on the planet. Uh, he, um, uh, he said a sea of fluctuating energy was there before the universe and it helped create the environment for the, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how he said it. I'm not, not on his level of intellect, fine. And I didn't study that, that topic in, in terms of the science and the physics behind it. But he's basically saying something. We're loosely putting these in categories. Energy before the universe, components, that's something. So we'll get to it. So uh, itself. I guess we have that's something. Argue. If there's components that establish, if the beginning of the universe, and then you're saying something came before, that's something, not itself. Do you agree or no? Not exactly. So you're kind of blurring the lines. Yeah, yeah, I'm distinguishing between uh, what we call the universe right now and anything that came before it. Anything that came before it is not the universe. It's a whole other um, subject matter. Yeah, yeah, but in that case, but then that's something. That's, that's something. That's, that's something. So it's not itself. So that's why I'm asking. Itself. The universe created itself. You're, you're giving another example of, and whether you've done something, you go, you're giving me, uh, you're giving me um, two answers to the question of what came before the universe, two that I've never gotten from any other university, any other high school, any other class, any other Zoom session I've had. So we're gonna stay in touch, inshallah, if you, if you don't mind. And I wanna, we wanna have more discussions because that's, that's impressive. But you agree that's, that's something. So on, this, on itself, the universe created itself. What do you guys think? Possible, impossible, and why? I wonder how the audio is. I forgot to connect the microphone because it's more focused on the content, but I'll give you guys time to think. What do you guys think? The universe created itself. Possible, impossible. Oh, real quick, wait, sorry. Second break, can someone pull up their YouTube? Who's the fastest? We, we never, we should have done this in the beginning, but that's my bad. I'd be curious to know if you can find this video and then let's see how it sounds and how it looks. Yeah. I'm missing a piece that holds this microphone, but yeah. I'm Dolan Ajar, which is my name, A-B-D-U. Who has a creative solution to how we can make this stand? Without the trial, L L A H. Take a thirty second break. Yeah, space in the jaw and A J J A R. You can show it to me. N A J J A R. We're at twelve thirty four. You guys good on time? Yeah. I'll wrap up. So and that's me. You want to subscribe or no? It's up to you. Is this see that I'm going live or not? Oh, there we go. Uh, hire the voice, hire the volume. Let's hear it. How? Oh, it's like a few second delay. But the audio is good. That was even before the. How about now with the microphone? Is it, is it better? Yeah, I should have done this before. But anyway, it's okay. Are you guys thinking? This guy's good. I'll just turn it off so that the audio is going to go in here. People can hear it twice. But it's cool. I appreciate you. Alhamdulillah, this is not bad. The room, you guys picked an awesome room, and you guys, uh, I appreciate the opportunity big time. This is fun. What, um, what do you guys think? Can we put, can we cancel it itself? Is someone at the door? You can come in. You can come in. It's, he walked away, okay. But there was someone standing right there, sorry. People get shy, you guys get shy too easy. I think like, if you're not doing anything wrong, why be shy anyway? That's my opinion, okay. Uh, itself, you guys are ready for a very gruesome, nasty picture that you're never gonna be able to take out of your head, ever? Ready? What is it called, not spoiler alert, what is it called? Uh, but warning, what's it called? Trigger alert? Close, close your ears if you don't like, if you get easily disgusted. Can a mother give birth to herself? Can a mother give birth to herself? Possible or impossible? Impossible. Impossible? 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 But well, why? Obviously impossible. 
obviously, but why? Why? It's good to think through things. Why is that impossible? For anyone to give birth to themselves. Because it relates, it's an analogy. For itself, people that are saying itself, the universe just created itself, you know, it's a, it's a big, it's complicated, and there's this and that. They can come up with a whole book on the topic, an encyclopedia on the topic, but really at the cr crux of it, they're saying the universe created itself, which means, should I say it? It existed and didn't exist at the same time, right? Mother gave birth to herself. Did she exist or did she not exist? How you give birth to yourself? How can something create itself? It means it didn't exist to create itself, but it existed to create itself. Can something exist and not exist at the same time? I know some of you are thinking like these, some of the words we're using today are. This is the language of philosophy. Although I tried to mostly use like normal language. I'm not really a philosopher, but we threw in a few words, maybe for you, our vocab words or new words, but it's good to always be learning. So, but yeah, what do you guys think? Can something exist and not exist at the same time? At a very micro level, yes. Can something exist and not exist at the same time? Yes. Because uh, you gave the example of the mother uh, giving birth to herself. Yeah. So you're okay. saying that the mother, one mother became two mothers, correct? Is that what you're saying? No, no but we're not saying that. Oh. Your mother giving birth to herself. Impossible, exactly. That's why you're not even able to wrap your head around it, because it's impossible. Yeah. We agree. So something cannot create itself. Is that fair? Yeah, because I was thinking more uh, worms when you cut off the name. Yeah, but they become two different worms, but they're not, they're not the same. They're not the same worm. They're, two, they're worm A and B. They're not, they're not the same. Even if they're, I don't know the answer to this, I'm not sure if biologically, if, they're, if you look into the genetics, it's identical DNA or it's a little bit different. But either way, it's still not the same. Because even if it's identical DNA, well, one of them is in, are they in the exact same location or two different locations? That's two different worms. That's better if there's something different about them. If it's the same location, with the same DNA, the exact same feature, the exact same problem, and everything, guess what? That's one, not two. Which also, this, that, that also, that train of thought, or that logic process, whatever, can also sometimes be used to talk about like the Trinity and God's, you know, the, you know, Jesus and stuff, but that's not for today. That's another future episode, future talk. There's a number of ways in which to, to talk about the Trinity. But anyways, but, uh, and this as well, this also is a way to talk about the Trinity, but that's a, you know, side point. Something cannot be its opposite. In logic, sometimes they use words. Have you guys ever taken any class on logic? Maybe you have. I took logic one and two in undergrad, it was like required, and I learned some good points, but sometimes it's words. In letters or symbols, like there's different ways of saying it. You can say it in a paragraph form, and then you can turn it into like letters, and you can also turn it into like symbols. But in this case, to keep it simple, yeah, unfortunately, I need a, I need a better marker for it to show. But A is one way to say it. A is not cannot be equal to negative A. Something cannot be its opposite. It's basic it makes sense. And things like this are actually don't need proofs in logic. Logic is a study, right? So you have philosophy, you have epistemology, you have ontology, you have uh, a number of different subjects. Uh, logic is part of it. Um, this doesn't need to be proved because all of logic is based on a number of basic rules that you have to have in order else it breaks down, right? So, so if you're interested in these topics, you can Google this, but Aristotle has like three basic laws, but this is one of them. Like, we wouldn't have logic if you cannot agree on some basic stuff. Something cannot be its opposite. So yeah, A is not equal to negative A or something. Anyway, that was a bit fancy, but I think you guys all agreed probably at the very start that something cannot create itself, can't exist and not exist at the same time. All right, and a uh, couple minutes here, inshallah, and then for those who need to go to class. Something created the universe. For us as Muslims, that was never controversial. This seemed to be probably too much or unnecessary. But again, remember, people have different beliefs in the world we live in. This is not actually even the majority belief necessarily. Um, I mean, agnostics are basically unsure, but something created the universe. Every something, another universe, universe bigger than ours, before ours, included of ours, multiverse, another god, a number of gods, because I remember other people around the world have different mythologies and different uh, uh, and different scriptures that they have that, that talk about different gods, good and evil, 360 gods, sun, moon, stars, skies. There's so many, there's almost an infinite amount of different views, but they can be loosely put into, uh, we could put, could be concretely put into just one or two categories. Either they believe something created the universe, that itself was also created, that's something, like another universe, so your examples would fall under here, or something created the universe that was uncreated, and we're getting back to your, I didn't ignore your point, your, your point is coming here. Something created or uncreated. Before we move on, can you guys think of any other possibility, or do we agree that it's one of these two, and then we're basically done with this part of the discussion on Islam, which is that we do believe God exists. Something that created the universe, it had to have been something, something either created or uncreated, is that fair? It's 50-50, like everything fits into one of those two. Tell me why something created couldn't have created the universe. We're saying God, right? Which is uncreated. We're saying Allah. Beginning of the world, He created the whole world and Muslims. Others, put yourself in their shoes sometimes. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to change. You don't have to stop being Muslim for even a minute. But put yourself in people's shoes and try to walk around in their shoes, right? Try to uh, put yourself in people's uh, emotional space. Try to be empathetic or sympathetic, yeah? There are people that are not certain that God exists. And they're wondering, and I can kind of see this, they're like, Christianity, Islam, these other faiths, first of all, I have different views on God, that makes it a little more complicated, fair enough. But also, it seems to be assuming a lot. Because you have whole stories. It's not just something created the universe, which is, I think no one would say is unscientific or logical, but you're saying is merciful and all-powerful and kind, and he created, he sent prophets, and this and there's judgment, and there's heaven and hell, and it's like, you, you made up all, it sounds like, and it says in the Quran that a lot of people would say, these are stories, you're just telling stories. How's it different than Greek mythology? Islam is like another mythology. Try to see from their point of view. Some people are in, uh, sincere when they think that this might be the case. So that's why it's good to take it logically. But something created created the universe. Why is that impossible? 
another something. For the sake of time, should I just, should I just go through this? Should I go through the next part? Are you guys a little bit brain dead? This is a lot, a lot, of, a lot of info for one day, yeah? Something created couldn't have created the universe because then the question would be, well, what created that? And guess what are the options? Four options. What created that? And if you go, it can't be nothing. Nothing creates nothing. It can't be itself. Nothing creates nothing. Itself can't create it. Something created it. Well, what is it? Something created it. And then guess what? Right? So if this universe, let's call this universe one, the one we're in, was created possibly by something universe two. Why do you have to assume God and you make up these only stories in the Quran and the Bible? Maybe there's just another universe created we don't know. Or another rock or another boulder or another object or a sea of fluctuating energy. Like, see, something created the universe we don't know. Right? It sounds like they're coming from humility. Some people are. But then you can ask, okay, well, then how about okay, universe three, create universe two, and something else was also created. There's a problem here. You guys see the problem? What's the problem? They go to infinity. So why is that a problem, though? What created that? Well, something created, we don't know. Something created, fine, but what's the problem with that? What's wrong with it if it goes to infinity? So what? That's a problem. Why is it a problem, though? We don't know where the start is, where the first creator is. You almost, you're like 99% there. We don't know the start, or there's a problem. The problem is, there would be no start. There would be no universe. No. There would be no universe. If this goes on to infinity, you'll never have the universe. The fact that we know this universe exists, but there is a universe. Now some of you guys believe like the matrix, like we're plugged into these things, you know, we've got electrodes in our brains and we're another, that's a whole other thing. With no evidence, we don't believe in things that are, that's unscientific to believe it, but we're on Mars and our brains are being used for whatever, whatever. As long as we can assume, we can agree, everyone in the room, and the room could have been people with, you know, that are Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, agnostic, Muslim, etc. So mean, all of humanity can agree that this universe does exist, because we can see it, touch it, feel, etc. For all purposes, it exists. Just the fact that it exists, it can't have gone to infinity. It can't be infinite. If it goes on to infinity, we'll never have the universe. And I can make it, we have simple analogies that make this a lot easier to understand. Check this out. Uh, favorite sport? Probably soccer. Okay. You're the captain of the soccer, uh, you're the striker in the soccer team. And you have the ball, you have the goal, you're about to kick. But let's say, it's a, you know, another world, it's a fake world, it's a, it's a, a hypothetical. You can't kick the ball until you ask the captain for permission. Let's say that's how it goes, the game of soccer. But the captain says, wait, no, you can't kick the ball, I gotta ask the coach. Coach says, wait, Captain, I have to ask the manager of the team. And it goes on FIFA, World Cup, you know, President of the United States, you know, the United Nations. Let's say it goes on to infinity, all right? You can't kick until it goes. I'm watching the stand, and I see you kick the ball. What do I know for a fact? That eventually what happened? Somebody, Somebody gave permission. I know it couldn't have gone to infinity. I don't know what happened. And if I see you kicking the ball, and that's the world we live in, that you have to have permission, I know that somebody said, okay, no, kick the ball. Or you kicked it yourself, like you didn't need permission. Or at some point someone said it, but it, I know for a fact, if I see you kick the ball, I know it couldn't have gone to infinity. Fair? You can apply this to any sport. And the, the workshop that I took some years ago on this topic on like Dawah and God's gifts, et cetera, was like a sniper, you need permission from the, you know, the soldier, the lieutenant, the governor, the mayor, the you know, editor-in-chief, editor-in-chief, I just joined the newsletter, uh, uh, commander-in-chief, the president, you get the point, right? There's different commands. But it can't be go to infinity, eventually there has to be permission. There has to be a start. There has to be an uncreated creator. Another analogy. Imagine in this room, you guys can see the, I mean, the door. That wall, we can't see past it. Imagine right here, this mean you see that? Imagine right behind you there, there's a domino. Behind it was a domino, a domino, a domino, and it wraps around the corner, either way. Let's say that way. Domino, 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 and let's say that one, you don't know, there's the edge of the, like it's not the building, it's, we're on the first floor, and it, like it's open, there's a field, there's the whole country, right? And we don't know, it could go to infinity. You see dominoes wrapped around, and then you're just watching, and all of a sudden you go, you hear, and see, they fall right in front of you. You see like five of them fall, six of them, and it wrapped around, you can see the curve, but you can't see none of that, or hear it. Do you know how many, could it literally be one domino right behind the wall and hit the five? It could be. Could it be a hundred, a thousand? Could it be infinite though? No. It can't be infinite amount of dominoes. Could it be infinite? If it was infinite amount of dominoes, that one in front of us won't fall. What's the analogy? What's the domino, that last domino falling is what? Bring it back to our topic. The domino falling is what? The universe, the universe existing. We know the universe exists, that last domino fall. It could be five, 10, 50, it could be a hundred, but it can't be infinite. Infinite, that's impossible. So you're going to go down this path of creative, but someone might say, this kind of, this, we're getting closer and closer to answering your question. We basically have answered your question. It can't be something created, because then you can always ask what created, what created. Well, someone will say, well, okay, fine, but what if it's two or three or four? But you're not going to assume it's three times, then it's our, our universe, four times. Unscientific, illogical. You go with a simple, in science, you're looking at data. You see data something, and then you, there might be multiple conclusions that could come from that data. You take the, the one that has the least assumptions, the least presuppositions, the, the least assumptions, like the least, yeah. We need to create a whole story of how this data fits to this conclusion. It should be the most logical conclusion. And if more evidence comes, you might change it. But the evidence we have that the universe exists, through this logic, we know that it wouldn't make sense to see something created it. We don't know what it is, but something. What created it? What created it? What's the most logical option is that something created the universe. That something did not have a beginning. But wait, you're saying the universe had to have been created by something, but this God was uncreated? But it necessarily exists. By definition, that if the universe exists and it was created, that there has to be something uncreated that created it. Or else, 
it goes to infinity. And it can't go to infinity, or else the last domino wouldn't fall. The fact that the last domino fell, it can't go to infinity. There had to be the first domino. That's the uncreated creative universe. There has to be a God, by definition, or else we'd have no universe. Boom, what do you guys think? I'm sorry if this stuff gets me excited. <laughs> exciting or not exciting? Exciting. A little bit complicated, a little bit much? Kind of, it makes sense, like kind of what we're... I'll be honest, okay, so I had a workshop of classes when I was a freshman in college. Right? on this stuff basically, and more. The workshop was older, God, the Quran, the Messenger, etc. But this was like the first part. And I listened to the workshop and I was like, my mouth basically was like, I was like, dude, this is powerful. I need this stuff for my discussions. And like, this is huge, I can tell. This was like 10 years ago. But I took that workshop, the same one, I took it again twice, then I went and started sharing it. Because I had to like, start taking notes. And So if it, did, if you, if it didn't all make 100% sense and you followed me at every piece, don't feel bad. I mean, literally that's not how it happened for me. And that's okay. But um, and we can definitely discuss it. And I can show you all the videos and, and notes and you can always ask me questions. But if you, the big picture was, science is telling us the universe began to exist. It hasn't been here forever. Logically then, it couldn't have come from nothing. It has a beginning. It didn't come from nothing. It didn't create itself. Nothing can create itself. Nothing comes from nothing. It had to be created by something. That something had to be uncreated. Or else you have it, it goes to infinity. In philosophy, it's called the infinite regress of causes. There's a problem if it goes to infinity. It cannot go to infinity. So something uncreated. We're calling that God. Well, are you, uh, are you saying that... You can ask questions on anything. And if you have to go to class, guys, you can go to class, man. Are you saying that... Uh... Question. Allah is the uncreated? Or Allah is the uncreated creator, or, the uncaused cause, the prime mover. Different terms in philosophy, yeah. but Allah is always saying uh, God himself is the uncreated, not just what the Muslims believe, but what everybody else believes as well. Oh, great question. So uh, at this point, this is a series, inshallah. We haven't yet decided this, uh, this MSA, we're doing the series, but this is part of a series, this is step one. The series does, there's a little bit more for us to say that it's Allah. That's a good point. Uncreated creator, and Allah is not the same thing. Allah is an uncreated, but Allah is also more than that. We have 99 names and all these attributes and all the quote unquote stories. Same quote unquote as in the Quran tells us all these stories. And remember, if someone doesn't believe in, in the Quran's one, then they were like, okay, that's an assumption. So, yes, you're making a good point. It's the beginning of the discussion. You need a little bit more before we can say, okay, the uncreated creator is Allah. Because Allah to us means a lot more than just a creator. So, if that answers your question, then yes. Allah is the uncreated creator, but yes, we haven't established that it's Allah and Islam, etc. Well, that is an uncreated creator. It's a good point. But this is the first part of the series. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Then, Excellent point, yeah. It's not the same. Then in the answer you gave, the argument should be that there can be multiple uncreated creators because then we'll have to touch into uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Greek mythology. This, guess what? The second, piece, the second piece is this is God's. It's a good, good, good point. So this series, the acronym, the, the, the person who came up with this workshop or this way of presenting Islam, and that's not the only way of presenting it, but I liked it, logical and so on. It's called Gorab, which is, I think you guys will remember it right away. It's pretty, it's catchy, Gorab. God's existence, oneness. So you're saying multiple gods. The second part is how do we know it's only one God? So that's what you were referring to. You said multiple gods. A revelation, how do we know the Quran is revelation actually from Allah? And prophethood, how do we know the Prophet is really a prophet? So the Gorab, it's like the basic foundations of why, why we're Muslim or what Islam is about. But yeah, it takes a little bit more to prove that that's Allah and that there's no other gods. But in short, yes. are you going to assume that there's we uncreated creator, created the universe, it makes sense now. We're in the universe, what happened? Oh, it's an uncreated creator, the logic was there. To then say, but maybe there's three of them. But scientifically and logically, you don't do that. You don't say, maybe there's three, maybe there's 360. Maybe one is pink and one is blue. Maybe one is good, one is evil. Maybe, with no evidence, do you do that in science and logic? How come we're the religion, we do whatever we feel like doing, do you make sense? I'm not bashing anyone with those beliefs, I'm saying, this is rhetoric, but... In science and logic, you imagine you're writing a research paper and you say, but maybe this happened and you go off on a tangent. Teachers are going to be like, yo, points off. Where's the revenue? Where's your site, your sources? So why do we not apply that with the religion? Even more so, it's more important than just that next you know, app or software or the next you know, scientific you know, article on a, I mean, these things are important. Science is important, but with your belief in God, you're going to walk through the street blindfolded and just go through and hope that the car doesn't hit you? That's what we're doing sometimes with the religion. It's nonsense, with all due respect. Uh, uncreated creator, we got there logically. To then say, well, there could be 15 of them. Could be, with no evidence of them. Because the universe is evidence for a uncreated creator. So assume there are others with no evidence. Like if that uncreated creator tells you, we're getting ahead of ourselves, that's the next part. That uncreated creator tells you, well, guess what, there's three of us? There's three of us. Now someone can say logically it's impossible. Okay, but I'm saying, but also Allah tells us about himself, you know? So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's basically, we're getting into the second part. Okay. Maybe for another time or if we have another class here, but we can also stay in touch. But you're excellent points, but this is just step by step. But this step was very necessary. Because we can talk about in other times and places, maybe you just talk about how God exists, God is only one, because you're talking to people that believe in multiple gods. But we live in a time where a lot of people are not sure or, certain, or feel that they're certain that God doesn't exist. So we went kind of like level zero, level one, level two, three, building that building. Islam is like, we have, a, we have a, a narrative, we have a world view. So it's like building it, it's like a building. So these are like the foundations, hopefully that makes sense. But you're asking good questions. It's just like, I don't want to start another whole you know, lesson. But uh, yeah, it's illogical to believe there's multiple gods with no evidence for that. You hear a knock on the door, you, there's someone there. You don't say, oh, it's a football team. Like it's possible, it's possible. Yeah, but that's not what we do in You don't say it's possible. Is it logical, is it likely? Yeah? 
Like your friend calls you, your friend calls you and says, me and my three friends are coming over in like an hour. You're sitting at home watching TV, there's nobody, you hear a knock on the door. If you assume there's four people, it's logical because you had evidence for it. He said, I'm coming, me and my three friends. But if you didn't say that, you hear a knock, and you can't say zero people. So sometimes atheists say, you know, God, oh, you guys are Muslim, you believe in, you know, all of the gods are fake, you believe in one God. We just took it one step further, there's no gods. No, but then how about the universe? Where did the universe come from? The uncreated creator is the most logical, simplest option. That's Occam's razor in philosophy, of assuming the, without making assumptions. But it also has an explanatory scope. It explains the universe. If you go with zero, like, oh, that's simpler. Simpler, but it doesn't explain why there's a universe. Then you have to go through the whole thing again. So one God is the most logical, scientific, and it's in line with the scripture and all that. It was a good place to end. Appreciate you for your participation, bro, and your questions, and hopefully we stay in touch. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity. I, I enjoyed it. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you guys. Feel free to text, call me anytime, DM me, email me, inshallah. And yeah, and I hope that you guys will share the link. Jazakum khairan, salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.